After eight years in Barcelona, we left behind the hustle and bustle of the city and moved to a village in the countryside with less than a thousand inhabitants. Why? Two words, la familia. We want to welcome guests, family and friends to our little corner of the world. But buying a 120 year old doer upper comes with its own set of challenges and sometimes minor disasters. Oh no, we got big pipes. But what's a renovation video without a few disasters? It's been about two weeks since I planted these seeds and we can see a couple of the petunias are starting to come up and also a couple of the gerberos as well. And we've got a lot of cuttings that are propagating at the moment up here as well. So we've got some roses, some mulberries, they're white mulberries and some figs. It's the perfect little area here in the roof because it gets a little bit of light and we can just come up and water them every day. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be sorting out this middle bedroom in the house, which is going to become our guest bedroom. This back wall in the bedroom has um, a big patch where the paint is all kind of flaking off. Um, so we think that maybe there must have been a water leak at some point because down this wall, there seems to be kind of water damage. And then uh, down into the bathroom, some of the tiles are coming away which suggests there might be some water behind that tile work as well.
here we've got the, the piping that we found underneath. It's been just like plastered in with some really soft plaster, so we're just taking that out. We've chased these pipes, looking downstairs, we've got copper water piping through the rest of the house. So we can see this upstairs, but we can't see any connection to this lead piping. We think it's been disconnected, and we think this water damage is from before, because none of it's actually wet anymore. So we're hoping that, you know, we'll just plaster over it and we've got a record of where it is now. So if there is an issue in the future, we can pull it apart and have a look. But I don't think we're gonna to need to use these, these pipes. It's just a bit of legacy left in the wall. So we're back up on the land today. Today we want to plant two types of vines. We've got grapes and we've got kiwis. These are both heat loving plants. So they should do well up here where we have quite a dry and hot environment at the same time. So we're just next to the house. This is where we're thinking to plant two grapes, just where we planted a walnut before, and it's next to the water. Congelates in coastal plains, endless views that we're passing through, making our way to a distant place, just us two. So we're going to train this growth over that way towards the other one and then where the new growth comes here we'll train this out this way and create a bit of a fan. Watch the sky fade into the night with you my arms I've got to use the tube to put the rocks in for the irrigation hole um, so I just dug a little hole and put them in now later um, but it's fine, it'll still do the same job. So that's both grapes in now. They're both eating grapes, they're not wine making grapes. We'd need a lot more um, vines if we wanted to make wine, so we wanted eating grapes. Um, so they're in, they're watered. Um, so hopefully they do well this summer and we'll hopefully get some grapes at the end of the season. We've done it the same way as before as we did with the trees with a slight difference. What we've done is we've dug a hole and put the grape in but then this time put the compost on top not mixed in under the earth. Our friend Peach from River Ebro Permaculture she told us that um, in such bad soil we're not supposed to put compost in the hole because then the roots are very happy whereas you want the roots to be searching out nutrients so best to put the compost on top and let the nutrients soak down and then we've capped it off with some chippings like before and we've done the irrigation hole with the stones um, like we've done with the trees so the water goes straight to the roots through through the stones and we're not losing any water to evaporation or watering other things that don't need it So there's one of the kiwis on the top of a bankal, so we can then stretch it across to that corner of the house in the future and that will provide us with some shade in the summer. And there's the last kiwi and again next to the house so in the future we can have a nice shady bit out front. Okay so to plaster the room we're using this stuff it's the KX16W2 from the 
bio range. Basically I asked for a lime plaster with fine sand and they didn't sell white sand. They said it comes as a premix, which is what this is. And it's a mixture of calcium hydrate and um, hydraulic cow as well. So it's water setting, but should also have some CO2 absorption and not be as dense or not as permeable as standard hydraulic, but there is hydraulic in there to set it. So with it being calcium, um, I do have a, a dust mask, gloves and goggles, uh, just because it can be quite alkali, which causes burns. It's a bit like acid, just the opposite way. So better to be safe. This is my first ever attempt at any kind of plastering. So this is before the sponge float or anything like that, but it's a very uneven wall. So the bottom here I'm not totally happy with, but in the middle bit, there was a big hole. I think it's come out okay. We'll see what it looks like after the sponge. So I finished the float coat with the sponge and then I've just gone over with a plastic trowel to smooth it all out. And so he's looking pretty good. Isabel's asleep in the room next door, so I'm whispering. But we have guests coming to stay in two nights and the room still looks like this. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the time that I've got now. morning our guests are arriving tomorrow and uh, the spare room is still not done we have done a couple of jobs so I got this painted yesterday and I've also done the ceiling and finished that off um, this wall has also been filled and is ready to paint and this plastered wall is ready to whitewash um, we didn't do much filming yesterday because we were just trying to get as much done as possible. So today we've got a couple of major jobs to finish off before our guests arrive. So wish us luck.
the mini makeover of the guest room finished. We do have a few things that we will do to this in the future and full disclosure, there are a few bits like this wall that haven't yet been finished. So we'll get around to those at some point, but we are now ready to receive some guests, have some friends and family visit and have a nice comfortable place for them to stay. So although we didn't get everything finished, it's good enough for now. We're happy with this. And the best thing is that this wall is now finished. All of that pipe work is concealed again. And Danny did a really, really good job with the lime. I'm so impressed with how this looks as a first attempt for um, plastering and lime wash. I think it's amazing and hopefully it shows us what we can do on some of the other rooms in the future. If you think you did a good job, give us a thumbs up, leave us a little comment down below. I think you did an amazing job. So that's where we're gonna leave it for this video and we'll see you on the next one.